Good morning, and welcome to the third annual Ending Age-Related Diseases Conference, online this year, and I hope you all are healthy and well. I'd like to thank you for joining us, especially given the current situation, and for being part of this most important field, be that as a researcher, investor, journalist, or advocate. The world needs our combined efforts more now than it ever has. Both today and tomorrow are filled with amazing speakers and panelists at the forefront of overcoming age-related disease, of which the current pandemic is one. And our team is here to assist if you need help navigating the conference platform so that you can see and participate in all the sessions you'd like to and network with each other throughout the event. On that subject, I'd like to thank our team at Lifespan.io, especially the conference organizer, Elena Milova, and our dedicated staff and volunteers. I'd also like to thank our event sponsors and media partners for helping to make this event possible. And I encourage you to learn more about these organizations and companies by visiting their sponsor pages in the conference platform or clicking their logos on our webpage at lifespan.io slash conference. And of course, I'd like to thank our donors and heroes who support us at lifespan.io slash hero, many of whom are in attendance today. Thank you. So. Last year, when I closed the conference by mentioning the importance of being aware of broader societal moments relevant to our work in overcoming age-related disease, I had no idea that a truly significant historical moment would soon find us. The COVID-19 global pandemic has affected us all and is the reason we are all here today, such as we are. And it's good that we are here, that we keep the flow of scientific information strong, because our collective work to address the root causes of the aging process and disease has never been more important. As many of us already know, age is the single greatest risk factor for COVID-19, just like it is for almost every disease. And this not only creates opportunities for us to engage the public in our work, but also serves to highlight the exact areas of our field that need to be developed in general in order to hasten the end of all diseases, infectious or otherwise. We need to continue improving upon our growing understanding of the root mechanisms of aging, translate the knowledge we already have into therapies and interventions that can affect it, build and make use of clear and standardized biomarkers that can measure these effects unequivocally so that we can make the value proposition of addressing aging itself undeniable to investors, policymakers, and the public at large. And that value proposition is undeniable. The demographics of the global population are growing ever grayer, and this trend is projected to accelerate in the coming decades. And yet, this is coming without a meaningful increase in healthy life expectancy, but rather an extended period of sickness and ill health that is poised to imperil the economic sustainability of the world, as the infirm will depend on society and loved ones to care for them, as they should. We've all known this for quite some time. But what we didn't know, or perhaps what we knew but didn't fully attend to, is that this same problem also leaves us vulnerable to pandemics such as this. And while it's absolutely correct for the scientific community to mobilize and solve this pressing problem as fast as possible, it is incumbent on us all to recognize this wake-up call, to understand the deep flaws in our healthcare system this moment has made clear, and to work on addressing the root causes of disease, including age-related immune system decline, which will make us more healthy as a society and more able to resist all diseases, pandemics included. The cost of inaction is staggering yet so too are the benefits of action. Thankfully, the world appears to be starting to recognize this. Despite the pandemic, or perhaps because of it, investment in biotechnology and the creation of new startups is continuing to move forward, and this includes life sciences. We can attest to this ourselves at LEAF, as the influx of promising aging research companies seeking to join the pitch meetings of our longevity investor network has never been greater than it's been in the past few months. And this shift in focus is catalyzing real results, with each step of progress bringing closer the promise and anticipation that we're drawing closer to it, the first breakthrough to result in significant extension of healthy human life. National data sharing initiatives are forging ahead to meet the present moment as well, with large-scale healthcare data systems being created to facilitate all kinds of research and which pave the way for new types of crowdsourced clinical trials more suited to the modern world. With advances in technology emerging to support this, working to address issues of data privacy and standardization while bringing the power to track meaningful biomarkers of aging right into your pocket. We at LEAF are doing our part as well, not only by continuing to support early stage research by crowdfunding, 
but also by engaging the public with large-scale video projects, press appearances, and through our news articles at Lifespan.io, which have honestly seen an astounding increase in traffic over the past few months. This increased visibility will hopefully enable us to reach new heights on our next crowdfunding campaigns, which you'll be hearing about in the near future, one of which actually being an in-house research project of LEAF involving the architecture of chromosomal DNA, which will be an exciting new first for us. Furthermore, we've completed last year's plans to merge our news outlet and crowdfunding site into a unified platform, which not only magnifies the effect of any of our initiatives, but also brings more features and tools to you so that we can all work together more effectively and invite even more stakeholders into our community. Such as the ability to clearly see the organizations in our field, who is working with whom, detailed information on the types of interventions they're working on, and the news articles that involve any of this information. And as our community continues to grow, it also, in turn, empowers our initiatives that outreach to an ever wider audience, such as our new Facebook and YouTube shows, Science to Save the World, and Lifespan News, our weekly news show designed to inform the public on the latest credible research to overcome the diseases of aging. And public perception is changing. In just the last few years, we've managed to interact with over 12 million people. And perhaps in part because of such efforts, the percentage of the American population, for example, who believe that extending healthy human lifespan is plausible and desirable has increased significantly. We are now at the turning of the tide, and this allows for new opportunities, press appearances and conversations that couldn't have happened a few years ago, books that couldn't have been written a few years ago, and powerful organizations that have not historically focused on aging turning their attention to this most important issue. And this could not happen soon enough. You've all heard me say this statistic before. Over 150,000 people die every day, and over 70% of this due to the diseases of aging. Over 100,000 people. But where do we really draw the line on what is an age-related disease? What does this number become when we add to it the deaths due to COVID-19, which is surely an age-related disease? What does it become when you add influenza, or even things you wouldn't normally think of, like car accidents or suicides? Almost everything is an age-related disease. And what this moment in history has made clear is that our work to overcome the root causes of age-related disease has more value to society than even we imagined at first. That's why I'm excited to share that we're going to be launching, by the end of this year, a large-scale initiative to drive this value proposition truly home to the public and policymakers, involving the writing of position papers with clear, specific, desired outcomes, powerful social media initiatives to raise awareness for this, and significant press attention. There was a concept put forth some years ago, the longevity dividend that sought to illustrate the vast socioeconomic benefits to be gained from addressing aging directly, in addition to the positive emotional and ethical effects of doing so. If there ever was a time for this message to be heard, that time is now. Because as powerful as the benefits it sought to illustrate were, it had no considerations for the additional benefits of mitigating infectious diseases and pandemics like this. Reducing rates of transmission and improving the efficacy of vaccines through better immune systems. Lessening economic damage through shorter necessary lockdowns. And creating the therapies needed to repair the damage caused to even those who recover, such as lung fibrosis. Furthermore, these focal points allow our field to meet the present moment in all ways. We hear the people when they say, it is not okay to sacrifice the elderly. We recognize the voices of the past that warned the burdens of an aging population would be disproportionately borne by women, by minorities, and by the poor. And we move forward into the future in solidarity with all humankind to work to solve the current problems at hand in a manner that brings true and lasting health to as many people as possible. Because truly it is a world where all see the benefits of therapies to overcome the diseases of aging, where we all see the most benefits of these therapies. It's in our power to build this future if we stand together, and I'm excited to see the work you all have to show us in the days ahead. The time for the longevity dividend is now. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful conference.